When it comes to material creation, we have a few options out there, from Substance Designer to Art Engine from Unity and so on and so forth. But today we're taking a look at a free material authoring tool based on the Godot engine. This is a free tool for everyone to play with regardless of the DCC app of choice. And the beautiful thing is Material Engine version 1 comes with a good number of features. For those who are thinking about taking a look at this, you can simply go over to the link in the description that will bring you right here where you can check it out. And to download and get this totally for free, all you need to do is hit the download now button and it brings you over to the section where you have to pay five dollars but for sure you want to get this for free so all you need to do is click on no thanks just take me to downloads and it will bring you right here and from this part is where you get to download this now the beautiful thing is this is available for both windows linux and also mac and with that said let's dive directly into material maker and take a look at some of the amazing things that you can now do with it so once you download the material maker this comes as a portable zip file which you can unzip and once you unzip it you can fire up the material maker which simply makes it super easy for you to work with since you don't need to install it and once this opens you notice that the user interface looks extremely simple and clean for you to work with this section that you have right here is your graph editor so this is where your entire graph exists right here is where you get to find your preview 2d preview 3d your preview 2d again and you also have your histogram this is where the library of nodes are being saved so you can find out that we have tons of them from simple to 3d pattern noise filter transform workflow and also a couple of miscellaneous ones. And if you're looking for some nodes, you can simply click right here and automatically it jumps to those parts and you can start working with them. Going over to the section is where your hierarchy exists and right here is where you can have a full overview of what's happening within your graph. Now this section is not only your graph editor, it also doubles up as a viewport. The PBR static material is not the only material that you have here in terms of exporting. If you right click, you also have a couple of other ones like the 3D PBR, the dynamic PBR, the ray matching, and so on and so forth. And right over here, you would also notice that we have some stuff. So like I mentioned earlier, this also doubles up as your viewport, which means that you can view your materials or you know the textures you're creating from here. And you can also view them right here with a 3D cube and the 3d cube of course you can also view them from here but in some cases you might want to have these things on a bigger view and this is where this also comes in handy now for those who are thinking about orbiting across this model you can do that with this tiny gizmo object that exists here and you can change the models by going over to the model section go over to select and you can change it to whatever one you want from these ones and the same thing happens here so if you go over to the 3d section you can do the very same thing go to select and you can change this to any of the ones that you want. Now let's start creating some material. So for you to get started, like we mentioned, you can come through here and pick up something. So the very first one which you might want to play with is the uniform node. So the uniform node by default simply means that you're training one given color. From the 2D viewport, you can see that if we switch over to 3D, you can also see that this is what we have. So it looks pretty nice. And this is just basic but then creating materials needs you to do a couple of tricks and stuff with the nodes and that is where playing with the shapes comes in so the very first thing which we'll need to do is to grab a star and with the star here i can click on the star itself and if we go to the preview section you can see it if you like to see the star right here you can turn this on so you can actually see the star and this makes sense because at this point you can see the number of stars and you can actually tighten this up you know to get a much more sharper edge if you like to get it blurry you can do that but we like to keep it sharp and we might want to also reduce the radius just a little bit. So I'm going to crank this up to about, let's say, 9. Looking good. At the same time, we can get some rays. And you guys know, click and you get to preview that. We can blur this or we could make it sharp. So you can also choose to just reduce this if you want. If you'd like to increase that, you can as well go ahead. With these two here, we can click and drag. And once you click and drag, a drop down for nodes pop up. And from here, you can start typing and joining stuff and having so much fun. So the very first thing which we'll do is to get a blend, which is typical. So we're going to get a simple blend. And with this blend now, we can also click and wire this right in here. So what we'd like to do is take a look at some of the things that we've just talked about right now. So we talked about the uniform. So I'm going to wire this uniform right here. So let's make that the background color so if i wire that in there and then i choose to change the color to something like that let's actually change it to something much more brighter okay so if we change the color to something like that 
And now we select and connect the output of the blend node to the albedo, you would see that we still have the very same thing. But then if we start cranking this all the way up, you now start noticing some very interesting patterns. Now you can flip this pattern back and forth, depending on what you want to get, and you would get some very interesting results every single time. So with something like this, you can now start creating some very beautiful looking stuff. Let's go ahead and throw in something else. So I'm going to get a circle and I'm going to drop in that circle light right here. Grab that, make it a bit sharper. And uh, maybe for this one, we could tile it. So I'm just going to type in the word tile and say make tileable. So if we switch over to the 3D, you can see that. So I'm just going to select this and hotwire this right over there. And you can see what we have. So if we go ahead and start reducing what we have right now, and let's just make sure that we have it a bit tight. And at the same time, let's just make sure we have this at a very good number. So I'm going to set this to 0 0.4. Looks good. So we can set this as 0 0.4 and now we can throw in a color. So we could just go ahead and throw in colorize. And what colorize would do is to provide us with a color ramp, which we can use to make colors. So I can pile that there. And from here, I can double click and select another color. So let's go for something a bit bluish. So we can go for something like that. Let's make that a little bit bluish like so. All right. So we can have that. Actually, we can even flip this. Okay. So we can flip this and we can have the, the exact way we want. And you want to match some more stuff. Okay. You can go ahead and throw in that simple blend and we can do the very same thing that we did earlier. So we can hotwire this right in here and hotwire this one right there. So this way you started creating that very interesting stuff that you've wanted. Now at any point in time, you feel like, okay, I think I might get the size of this one a little bit lower. You can, you can throw a simple scale in and you can scale this. So you could find all of this from here. So from textures to 3D stuff, you can find them there. So I'm just going to go ahead and drop this to about 0.5 and also 0 0.5, okay? So we can get something right there in the middle. And while we're doing this, if for some reason you are thinking about creating some sort of depth with it, you can click, drag, and connect this over to the depth section, and you would notice that we now have depth. So this is very, very interesting. And you would also notice that we can drop down the depth a little bit, you know, so if it's protruding a bit too much, you can drop this down so you can use these to create those displacement and you can hotwire whatever you want at any given time to get some very interesting results. There's also some very cool stuff that I believe lots of you guys would love. So if, for example, you're creating stuff with curves, we do have a simple curve here. So I can just click and drag out this curve, select it. And the, the cool thing with this one is you can play with the handles. So in this case, I can drop this handle right here, move this right over there. And we can start doing some very cool stuff. So I'm going to drag out and type in the word mirror and we can hit that mirror right there, select it and you can see what we have. Now, if we start pushing this up, I want you guys to notice that we don't get what we want, but let's flip this and you start seeing some very beautiful things. So I can move that to a point like so, say we get that. And we can also make a copy of the mirror. So you can just do a simple Ctrl C, Ctrl V, have that there and we can flip it. So once we flip it and we start pushing this, we can also flip that as well. And you can see what we'll get. And so I'm just gonna crank this a little bit upwards like so. And to anything you're making changes to, you can always come here, make that change, go over to whatever you want, take a look at the nodes that you've just built and you can see that. And by the way, we also have some very nice things like the wheat and all that controls right there. And you can start using this to beautify and also create some very interesting shapes for your materials. And by the way, if you're also looking at places where you can learn some more stuff, you can definitely take a look at this extensive manual that has lots of tutorial about the entire thing. And if you're also wondering how can we export this, you can. So if you're done creating any of your masterpiece, I believe, you can simply choose the size you like to export this. Now, this is just barely scratching the surface of what you can do with this and it actually gets even more interesting. So at the end of the day, if you're done, you can simply go over to export and you can export your materials as either Blender, Godot, Unity 3D, Unity, HDRP, and also Unreal. Now to any of these ones you're exporting, you can use these in any of the tools that you will be working with. At the same time, this comes with a couple of examples. So if you open up the file, where you have this, you can go over to the example section 
and take a look at some of the examples that ships with this. So for example, if I just drop in the PTEX 3D object, you can see what we have here. And this actually deals with the depth. And I believe these are very good learning materials. So you can use them to learn about how to start creating some things. It will drag in a simple floor and we drop in that floor. Let's also switch the model so we can see that. All right. So you can also see these and all of these are available for you to just come through, pick up, export, use them for whatever you want. You're trying to create lava. There's an example file that shows you how you can build the lava and you can tile this however you want. And it just keeps going on and on and on. So for those who are thinking about getting this and probably playing with it, links to this is going to be in the description. So do well to check it out. And of course, if you like this video or you like something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.